Welcome back. Now we've just created a couple of different implementations of our bullet hit interface. We have one implemented on the enemy class and one on an explosives class and both do different things. We're going to add to this function on the enemy class by implementing damage. So in this video, we're going to set up damage. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm here in enemy.h and the enemy class is going to need some way to measure health. So let's add a couple of protected variables. These will be floats and I'm going to create a float called health and I'll create another float called max health. This way we'll have a max health and a health variable and we'll use these two to create a percentage that can drive a health bar when we want to see visually how much health the enemy has. For health, let's add a U property and we'll make this visible anywhere. Blueprint read only and we'll use category combat and the meta allow private access specifier. Now for max health, I'm going to copy this U property but I'm going to actually make this edit anywhere and blueprint read write. So the health variable should be changed from C++, but max health can be edited on the blueprint. For health, the comment will be current health of the enemy. And for max health, we'll say maximum health of the enemy. Now let's give the enemy some default values for health and max health. We'll go up into the constructor. I'll add a colon and start my initializer list. I'm going to say health and let's set that equal to 100.f and max health can get the same value. Now we're going to want to be able to do damage which means our weapon class should have a damage property. So let's go to weapon.h. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom of the private variables and add two new private variables. These will be floats and I'm going to call the first one damage. And I'm going to create another float called headshot damage. This way, if we hit the head, we can cause more damage than the regular damage amount. I'm going to go ahead and copy the U property for B automatic. So it's edit anywhere, blueprint read write, and category weapon properties with our meta specifier. I'm going to give that same U property to damage and headshot damage. For damage, our comment will say amount of damage caused by a bullet. And for headshot damage, will say amount of damage when a bullet hits the head. Now we're going to need to get these from outside the class. So let's create some public getters for these. We'll say force inline float get damage const return damage return damage and We'll have another one, force inline, float get headshot damage. This will be const as well, and it will return headshot damage. Now we would like these values to be different depending on the weapon. So we can add these to the data table. So let's go all the way up to the data table and add two more variables. We're going to add a float called damage and a float called headshot damage and we'll make them both edit anywhere blueprint read write now we need to set these in on construction so let's do that we'll go into weapon.cpp and go to on construction and right here where we're setting our variables we're going to set damage equal to weapon data row damage and headshot damage equal to weapon data row headshot damage. Now we can compile. 
Now in order to apply and deal damage, we're gonna make use of the take damage function that's inherited by the enemy class. Take damage is a function inherited from the actor class. So we didn't even need to create a take damage function. This is built in to the actor so we could take advantage of this function. So in a public section here in enemy.h, we're gonna add the take damage function. Now we're overwriting this. So we're gonna use virtual and it returns a float. So this will be virtual float take damage. And the take damage function takes several inputs. The first is a float called damage amount. Next, we have a struct called f damage event. It's a const reference and it's called damage event. Next is an A controller called event instigator. And finally, we have an A actor pointer called damage causer. And this, of course, is an override. Now, take damage is inherited from the actor class. You can right click and peek the definition. And you'll see take damage here on the actor class. And you can see the function input parameters here. Now we can implement take damage. Let's go ahead and let Visual Studio create a definition for us and let's put some functionality in here. The first thing we can check is to see if our health minus damage amount is less than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna check to see if health minus damage amount is less than or equal to zero dot F. If so, I don't want a negative health amount, so I'm gonna set health equal to zero. And else, I'll simply decrement health by damage amount. Now take damage returns a float, so I'm gonna simply return damage amount. Now here in shooter character, we're gonna to go to the send bullet function. Here is where we get our beam end location, which we're passing a F hit result into. And now we have our F hit result actor, and we're checking to see if this actor implements the interface. Now, right here where we're checking to see if we've hit an actor that implements the interface, we can also check to see if that actor is an enemy. So similarly to how we cast it to an I bullet hit interface, we can cast the hit actor to an enemy as well. So I'm gonna create an A enemy pointer called hit enemy and set this equal to a cast to A enemy. And I'm gonna cast the beam hit result dot actor dot get so we can dereference this weak pointer and get the actor. Now, since the A enemy type is undefined, we need to scroll up to the top and include enemy. So we'll add to our includes list here, include enemy.h. Now, when we scroll all the way back down, we should no longer get an error here. Now we're gonna check to see if the enemy is valid. So if hit enemy, and here is where we can apply damage. Now we've implemented take damage on the enemy. And the way take damage works is we have to apply damage from here in the shooter character class. And we do that using a U gameplay statics function called apply damage. So let's call that. It's gonna be U gameplay statics. The function is apply damage. Now the first input parameter is an actor. This is the damaged actor. We're gonna use our beam hit result dot actor dot get and pass that value in. Now next is a float called base damage. This is the damage amount. For now, we're just gonna get the damage from our equipped weapon. So let's say equipped weapon get damage. The next input is a controller. 
and this is the controller of whatever's causing the damage. So we're going to pass in get controller. Next is the damage causer. We're going to pass in this. And finally, we need a T subclass of for a class called U damage type. There is a class called U damage type which allows us to do different things depending on the type of damage we're causing. We're simply going to use the U damage type and call static class which will give us a U damage type to satisfy this input parameter requirement. Now I'll go ahead and put each argument on its own line here just so we can see what we're doing. So now when we hit an enemy, after checking to see if it implements the interface, we now check to see if it is an enemy, and if so, we call the uGameplayStatics apply damage function. Whenever we call apply damage, if that actor implements take damage, then its take damage function will be called. Let's see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and compile. And my error list is telling me that A actor is undefined because there is an uppercase C here. So again, another typo, which means I should probably be a bit more careful when typing these in. So let's take a look at take damage in the .cpp and see if I, yep, it looks like I copied that in. So now that that is fixed, let's attempt to compile this again. Okay, so we've compiled, and before we test this out, we need to go into our data table and open the weapon data table. And in each of these, we have a damage amount and a headshot damage amount. So for the submachine gun, we can select a damage amount. I'm going to give it a damage amount of, say, 20 and a headshot damage amount of 30. Now we're not using headshot damage yet, but we'll set these here for when we do. Now for assault rifle, let's give the damage amount say 30 and headshot damage 40. And finally for pistol, we can give the damage amount say 15 and 25 for headshot. Now we can save this. And now since we're changing our data table, we need to move the weapons to kick off that on construction function. So I'm going to just select this weapon and move it over just by a tick. And I'll do the same thing for each of these weapons as well, just so that on construction is called for them. Okay, great. Now we're going to test this out. And in order to test it out, I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to go into the world outliner and search for enemy and select enemy BP. And with enemy BP selected, I'm going to search in the details panel for health. And now we can see the value for health and max health. Now we're going to test out damage for each of these weapon types. So I'm going to pick up an assault rifle and a pistol. And let's go ahead and shoot the enemy and see if health decrements. So first I'm going to shoot a shot or two from the SMG. And it looks like it's working. Let's switch to the assault rifle and do some damage with this one. And it did 30 damage as expected. Now I'm gonna switch to the pistol and fire off a round. And now our enemy is at zero. So this would be when the enemy dies, which we haven't implemented death yet but that will come in a future video. So now we have damage successfully implemented. In the next video, we're gonna work on showing the enemy health with an enemy health bar. That way we don't have to go into the enemy details panel to see the value of the health variable. We wanna see it visually in the form of a health bar. So we're gonna do that in the next video. I'll see you then.